Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, welcome back. So we have uh, discussed extensively about turbulent flame speed and about different experimental setups to measure those essentially. So now we will go back to essentially the turbulent uh, flame modeling and one of the most uh, apart from the G equation model uh, one of the most prominent model has been the BML model which is a Bray Moss Libby model proposed by Bray Moss and Libby and uh, it is essentially a classic model in turbulent combustion okay and uh, it starts uh, with this thing uh, it is uh, it starts um, uh, with the with the with the with the definition of a progress variable uh, which is essentially a non dimensionalized uh, 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 reactive scalar variable. So, uh, uh, the advantage is that if you define C that is a progress variable in this manner that is C is equal to T minus T u, T u is the unburned temperature and T b minus T u whereas T u is T b is the burned gas temperature uh, for the turbulent flame and uh, typically if it is a um, if there are not much heat loss then this T b will correspond to the adiabatic flame temperature and T unburned is the uh, unburned gas temperature these are fixed values this does not fluctuate and uh, so I will see that uh, we can define C is equal to T minus T u and T b minus T u in this manner and then the advantage is that C always varies between 0 and 1 ok. So, uh, and we can also define C in terms of a prog in, ter in terms of a um, uh, in terms of a mass fraction of a product whereas y p is uh, uh, divided by y p b ok. So, uh, uh, the p d f of uh, we can assume the p d f of C as uh, in this manner that is uh, uh, we can uh, say that uh, uh, the, 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 the p d f of uh, C is essentially uh, given by uh, this uh, this is the p d f of C at any point x and t x is the, the position vector of that point is given by alpha at that point x t which is a parameter. Uh, 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 and this is a delta function which uh, delta function is when c equal to 0 is equal to 1 and uh, when uh, c equal to any other value um, uh, it is essentially equal to 0 ok. So, uh, you can define this uh, so uh, d of uh, x is equal to uh, 1 um, and is equal to 0 when x equal to 0 and for x not equal to 0 ok. So, this is how our delta function is defined. Um, so, uh, uh, so this 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 essentially this delta function assumes the assumes, assumes the value one when c equal to zero and plus this is given by beta times x t times delta function of one minus c. So when you have c equal to one, then this delta function assumes the value one and otherwise equal to zero. So this is equal to one when c equal to zero, and this is equal to one when c equal to one, and this is equal to zero in all other cases. Okay. Uh, that is the point ok and uh, the uh, an alpha plus beta is equal to 1 that is how the probability dis distribution works and this is um, essentially it is a pdf which is given something like this. So, this is c uh, this is c equal to 0 this is c equal to 1 and this is alpha and this is equal to beta ok. So, this is this is um, how the, 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 P, the pdf of uh, essentially c looks like. And this is uh, assuming a flame. This is essentially a, uh, this type of model is only valid for a uh, for a for a for a uh, in the corrugated flamelets regime, where you say only c only varies between zero and one, and any other values is not possible. Okay. So uh, of course c equal to zero corresponds to the reactants, and c equal to one corresponds to the products. And this way we can basically figure out where the location of the flame is. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, we can using this definitions you can also define a Fabry averaged uh, velocity at any point and that is given by uh, uh, 1 minus c uh, tilde c here is the Fabry average times u u tilde plus c tilde times u v tilde ok this is this follows. Whereas, uh, you know, the de actual definition of alpha and beta are essentially the, the probabilities of um, alpha and beta are essentially the probabilities of finding the unburnt and the burnt mixture respectively ok. So, this is what uh, alpha and beta are. 
So, uh, now um, uh, the one can uh, derive an equation of C just like what you can do is that you can uh, since you have a temperature equation you can put in the uh, simplifications that is your uh, 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 different terms the radiation term is non uh, is equal to 0 and you invoke the uh, distinct uh, is, is the same diffusivity mm. and, the, and, the, and the Lewis number equal to 1 assumptions and you can from the temperature equation you can just immediately derive the C equation because C is just an algebraic function is just a some constant times uh, temperature right mm, some constant times uh, divided by this is c is it uh, is only just a uh, algebraic function of a linear function of temperature so immediately you can from the temperature equation uh, you can derive an equation of c mm, uh, so uh, so, uh, uh, in this manner uh, you can derive the equation of C and then just uh, like an equation of the reactive scalar one can immediately derive a transport equation of C which is uh, C uh, average C, uh, C uh, uh, this is the Favre average uh, C and one can define derive a uh, uh, transport equation of C uh, tilde which is given by this is the uh, average density times d c tilde d t plus rho uh, times um, u uh, uh, this will be u tilde actually uh, this is u tilde times uh, gradient of C. Uh, minus this so once again this uh, scalar transport terms comes um, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, 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 u prime um, uh, uh, c prime and then um, uh, once again uh, these are these are the fluctuating velocities and then um, uh, this is the the divergence of this uh, this term um, and uh, you have uh, then you get. Uh, Mm, uh, this um, uh, omega c uh, tilde which is the mean reaction rate ok. This is the Fabry averaged uh, mean reaction rate uh, for this uh, uh, variable uh, c. Of course, uh, this is an equation for the this you derive this uh, averaged um, equation for c from uh, from that of a reactive scalar. So, of course, you will get a reaction uh, reaction rate uh, uh, term. Um, so, this is the distinct difference between the mixture fraction model in the mixture fraction uh, model even if you derived defined a variable uh, a variable which goes between z and 1 and that was essentially a passive scalar variable whereas this is a reactive scalar variable and the reactive scalar variable uh, for uh, equation has other problems. So, uh, the first uh, problem is essentially that um, you have to um, have this uh, that uh, the you have to uh, have this uh, uh, of this closure of this different terms and uh, you have to have the closure of the mean reaction rate ok and, uh, of, uh, and then you have to uh, have the closure of this uh, uh, scalar transport term. Mm, uh, so, that is that is the mm, uh, that is the problem. Mm, so, I will show you the problem here. So, this is these are the two unclosed terms that we need to take care ok. So, let us say we will we will look into the we will look into this term we will look into this term and these two terms separately. So, the, if we have these two terms uh, we have a model a uh, good model for these two terms then the whole problem of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, transport equation of the mean c is solved ok. Uh, so, uh, then uh, uh, the problem is that that if you define this is your term to be closed u prime c prime and that is equal to average of rho times you can write it like this and c minus c tilde this of course means this right this and exactly it means this just we have invoked the definition of u prime and c prime ok oh ok let us say it is not visible let us write it down the plane. So, this is the closure problem for this quantity ok. So, uh, uh, this can be exactly written as in terms of the normal ensemble averaged it can be written as this is just the de definition of our average right ok. And then we can model this as we can write this, this implies is equal to uh, 
this can be scaled as like this from here okay so this is this this part and then this part comes here and this part can be written like this okay Oh, by by scaling arguments, right? On on the overall, so of course this quantity is this is positive. This is c is c is always greater than zero, and c is c tilde is always greater than zero, and c tilde is always less than one. So this quantity is greater than zero, whereas u b average is of course greater than u u average. Okay. Because of gas expansion, the bound gas velocities must be greater than the unbound gas velocity. This is, of course, for a one-dimensional statistical planar uh, flame that we are talking about here. Okay, and then this implies that this is a positive quantity and this is a positive quantity. So then it means u prime c prime. This is a positive quantity. Now, if we invoke the gradient transport assumption we should have written okay we should have written minus u prime c prime averaged is equal to a turbulent diffusivity times dc dx right now then what happens is that because this quantity is greater than zero this whole quantity is less than zero this is greater than 0 and of course this is also greater than 0 because it goes from 0 to 1 from uh, unbound side to greater than side. So, essentially you have a conflict on the right hand side you have uh, your entire term is essentially greater than 0 and on the left hand side you have a corner term which is less than 0. So, then it means then this is not there is not gradient assumption, but there is counter gradient there is not this this assumption of uh, this um, this gradient transport is invalid for uh, this type of uh, turbulent flames in terms of the progress variable when you write in terms of the progress variable. So, progress variable does not allow you to invoke the gradient transport assumption because it, it, it there is counter gradient uh, 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 diffusion that is taking place instead of the gradient diffusion. Okay. So, this phenomena is called counter gradient diffusion. Okay. And uh, of course, this becomes less important when your u u prime is less than S L. Okay. Or oh, sorry, when your u u prime um, is uh, uh, is much greater than S L. That is when turbulent is very strong. Okay. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, when the, the, the reason is that that this counter gradient diffusion is essentially considers both things. It considers turbulent mixing as well as gas expansion. So the actually, when you apply this gradient transport assumption, you consider only turbulent mixing. You you use the gradient transport assumption to only model turbulent mixing. But here, gas expansion because of this u u b is greater than u u. This has complicated the picture. Okay. So, that is the what uh, what is uh, may ha what has made uh, things more complicated. So, this is essentially a, a combination of this uh, counter gradient diffusion um, contains uh, both turbulent mixing plus gas expansion. So, this has to be kept in mind if you use to model uh, this uh, thing uh, as as um, uh, if you want to model uh, if you want to model uh, uh, this uh, uh, this progress variable uh, average progress variable transport assumption and I want to close this unclosed terms. Uh, so, then you have to be mindful of the fact that then in this uh, this uh, C domain you have got strong counter gradient diffusion and that needs to be accounted. So, you have to find out situations when you have to use counter gradient diffusion or you have to use gradient diffusion. So, the other problem of course, is uh, the uh, the closure of this, uh, 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 this uh, the same problem is of course, the closure of this uh, u prime c prime and it was closed in this manner. 
So, this uh, 1 C tilde times 1 minus C tilde term state and this essentially contains uh, the gas expansion as well as, as well as the turbulent mixing in this form. So, this was closed by Venante and this was the form that was uh, taken. Mm, so, uh, this, this uh, was uh, uh, the form proposed by Venante which was used to close this um, unclosed term and this uh, appeared to be a good model for this uh, for, for to tackle this counter gradient diffusion problem. Now, of course, you still need to close for this term that is the mean reaction rate mm, and that can be closed uh, by this uh, way uh, whereas, uh, this uh, model was proposed so that uh, this omega c uh, uh, ensemble average is equal to um, is equal to the is equal to unbound gas density times the planar laminar flame speed times the stretch factor times some this uh, this uh, this constant g and uh, a coefficient and uh, times the c times 1 minus c divided by uh, l. So, there are several par parameters that you see has come in. So, whereas this I 0 is a stretch factor, G is a coefficient and L y is a crossing length scale which needs to be modeled or alternatively I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, this, this thing actually feeds into this thing. You can model this whole thing as uh, this uh, entire thing um, as something called uh, flame surface uh, density which is the essentially the flame surface per unit volume. So, uh, this much uh, for the turbulent flames. So, what we have done uh, I mean if you have uh, if you just uh, go through a, um, a recap of this uh, whole um, turbulent flame uh, thing. The most important thing is of course, as you see here uh, once again I will show you this uh, video that you see this turbulence uh, interacts with this flame at a multitude of length scales and it stretches and folds this thing. So, it is important to understand that um, and uh, the, you, the, the most important property is that this uh, turbulent flame propagation gets much uh, faster than the um, laminar flame. But uh, before going into that what we need to address is that uh, the different regimes in which the flames can behave in a very different manner. Okay. There are regimes in which the flame uh, properties can dominate over the turbulent flow properties, but there are regimes in which the flow properties the turbulence properties can dominate over the flame properties and that can change the flame structure. So, we went into this thing called the regime, regime diagrams where uh, we, we obtain different scaling laws um, uh, where we obtain different non-dimensional num numbers uh, not exactly scaling laws uh, non-dimensional numbers in terms of this known turbulence and flame parameters and we obtained this uh, this regime diagram and uh, which was plotted in U prime by SL and uh, flame uh, integral length scale by flame thickness. So, with this these two are the most important uh, regimes we identified. Uh, for, for turbulent flame um, uh, most practical regimes. So, in this corrugated flame sheet regime um, in this regime what was uh, the, the thing was that the flame was essentially wrinkled by turbulence okay, and uh, but the both the preheat zone structure as well as the reaction zone structure was essentially similar to that of the laminar flame except the fact that it was bent except the fact that it was stretched. Okay. But uh, all these properties uh, this in internal properties could be considered same as that of the laminar flame and this was the condition when your Karlovitz number was essentially less than 1. Karlovitz number less than 1 meant your essentially your uh, flame thickness was smaller than the Kolmogorov length scale which is a smaller scale of turbulence. Whereas, in the reaction sheet regime you had uh, basically a structure where your essentially your uh, preheat zone um, you know, structure to be uh, to be uh, to be disturbed by the smallest turbulence it is. This was because your Karlovitz number was greater than 1. Karlovitz number greater than 1 meant your flame thickness was essentially greater than the Kolmogorov length scale which is the smallest scale of turbulence and as a result of that your smaller scales of turbulence could penetrate into the preheat zone and distort the structure there. So, in this regime it is, uh, uh, it is understood that along with molecular diffusivity your turbulent diffusivity might be important. Also, there is also another regime where well stirred reactor regime where your Karlovitz number your reaction Karlovitz number was essentially greater than 1. So, it means that it meant that your now your Kolmogorov length scales is essentially smaller than the even the uh, reaction uh, zone thickness. Of course, you remember the reaction zone thickness divided by the preheat zone thickness was equal to the Zeldovich 1 by Zeldovich number which is a very small number as such. Mm, but still if your Kolmogorov length scale and the, mm, the, the preheat zone uh, uh, if your Kolmogorov length scale is smaller than the preheat zone thick uh, from than the reaction zone thickness, then it is expected that the Kolmogorov radius can even distort the uh, the reaction zone and completely disturb the distort the flame structure, and the whole flame essentially behaves like a well stirred reactor. But still, uh, this there is no experimental uh, verification of this regime, though there is experimental verification of these two regimes. But this uh, regime boundary should not be taken with too much. Uh, uh, these are not very rigorous as such, and these boundaries are kind of smudged. And um, uh, but but this gives you an idea about what kind of structures to expect. 
Okay. So, these are the different things that we had went through and uh, then uh, we uh, defined the uh, flame speed. So, you see that uh, this way by this uh, by this process we essentially moved from our understanding of the laminar flame planar laminar flame that we developed in the previous classes and which allows us to directly smoothly graduate into turbulent flame. So, this is the turbulent consumption speed which uh, the this flame displacement speed which is essentially the rate of propagation of the surface. This is the rate of propagation of the surface. Uh, uh, surface propagation with respect to the local fluid velocity. Mm. Uh, so, so the the uh, the SD is essentially a relative velocity of the of the surface with respect to the local fluid velocity. Okay, in the direction measured in the direction normal to it. Um, so, this is the fluid uh, velocity. And then uh, we concept went to the concepts of flame stretch, and uh, which is essentially the rate, rate of change of surface area per unit original surface area. And we saw that the rate of flame stretch has two parts: the tangential stretch rate and the and the uh, 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 SD times the curvature. Uh, so. Uh, Mm, essentially the uh, then we went into the different flame lit models and uh, which was like uh, scalar variable g and progress variable c and then we went into g equation where we with this where we showed that uh, flame propagation can be described by the motion of an uh, motion by by the by the by the evolution of a variable uh, where we consider the flame surface to be essentially an isosurface of that variable. Okay, and then uh, uh, then this this isosurface locally propagates with this flame displacement speed, and uh, then we can derive the um, G equation. And once again, we need to put in some inputs into the G equation, and which came from the our previous models, uh, where your SD can be the local input into the G equation. That is, this needs to be inputted uh, as a model, and that can be inputted by the which is which we show that it depends uh, to the leading order on the flame speed, planar laminar flame speed and then of course, on the curvature and the tangential strain rate. Of course, this was in the weak stretch limit and then we went into the into a model for the turbulent flame and then we showed that uh, why the turbulent burning velocity is important. Uh, we showed that the turbulent uh, by considering the mass flow rate into the wrinkle flame surface, uh, we can define an averaged turbulent flame speed. So, uh, by this way and uh, then uh, we uh, went on to define find out the turbulent flame speed for the, the thin reactions on regime and uh, we showed why turbulent flame speed is important. Mm, uh, then uh, of course, we uh, showed you why uh, we have been recapped why, why turbulent flame speed should be proportional to the uh, turbulent flame speed by local laminar flame speed should be proportional to the flame surface area by actual uh, by the project area or the planar laminar flame surface area. Then we showed different turbulent flame speed experiments, uh, the state of the art experiments and uh, how the turbulent flame essentially propagates and how the multi scale structure of the turbulent flame emerges under the effect of turbulence. And then we showed you how uh, why you why the why the for our expanding flame the characteristic length scale should not be the uh, only the length scale of turbulence, but the characteristic length scale of the flame should be the characteristic important, but the characteristic radius of the flame the average radius of the flame should be the characteristic length scale when you want to define turbulent flame speed as a function of, uh, of Reynolds number. Mm, uh, because you have to remember that the, the, uh, the, the, the turbulent flame speed is is uh, important uh, turbulent flame speed is increased over laminar flame speed because you have uh, the flame surface area is larger a uh, turbulent flame surface area is larger than a laminar flame surface area. Now, the larger flame surface area can be is caused by stretching and wrinkling by turbulence at different lengths uh, and time scales. So, uh, only those scales of turbulence essentially which can disturb the flame structure uh, disturb the uh, create new area should be considered and for a kernel for a spherical flame uh, only those structures only those turbulent structures which are of the order of radius or smaller than radius can affect the uh, flame surface to create wrinkles whereas uh, structures turbulent structures which are much much larger than the radius does not serve any purpose in terms of generating new area. So, that needs to be kept in mind and uh, that uh, created this mm, a type of different scaling laws and uh, uh, then we uh, obtained uh, uh, showed the new experiments in this turbulent flames mm, and then we showed the Bre Bre moss Libby model and the closure problem of the Bre moss Libby model where you cannot directly invoke the gradient transport assumption because uh, C undergoes counter gradient diffusion due to uh, gas expansion uh, when essentially this is an effect of both the turbulent mixing and gas expansion. So, whether it will be counter gradient or gradient diffusion depends on which means turbulent mixing or gas expansion and then we showed the, the models which can be used for 
for essentially defining the mean chemical reaction rate which is the another uh, the other closure uh, problem here. So, uh, with that uh, the uh, this uh, uh, the discussion of the turbulent flame speed uh, the discussion of the turbulent premix flame uh, 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 comes to an end and uh, we will uh, 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 essentially this, this part of this course that is where we discuss turbulent flames uh, which essentially originated from discussion of turbulent flows to discussion of turbulent combustion then moving on to turbulent on premix flames to turbulent premix flames. This part of the course comes to an end and then we will move into the final part where we will discuss about practical combustors. So, uh, see you then and uh, until then goodbye.